Yo, what is going on, Shuffle Squad? I hope you all are having a fantastic day. My voice is a little messed up right now, caught a little bit of the ick, but at the end of the day, I'm still here to bring you guys some amazing content. So today, we're going to be talking about probably the last deck we haven't covered on the channel yet, Gudra V-Star. Okay, so Gudra V-Star. What can we say about Gudra V-Star that probably hasn't been said a billion times before? Gudra V-Star is a Pokemon that has seen quite a bit of play in the competitive format. I believe it's actually won a regionals with Arceus. I believe that it has made it quite a few top 64, top 16s in the past. I haven't done a whole bunch of research on its most recent placements. However, I do know that it has placed within the top 64 at our last regionals here in the U.S. Hartford. So what does Gudra V-Star do? Gudra V-Star is a very interesting Pokemon because it reduces the damage it takes by 80 every time it uses its, it uses its attack rolling iron. So 200 damage is what it does for a water, a steel, and a colorless, and next turn you take 80 less damage. It also has a very, very good ability called the Moisture Star, where you can remove all the damage from one of your Gudra V-Star, the Gudra V-Star that uses Moisture Star, so you can kind of reset itself and give it a whole bunch of HP to work with throughout the entire set. So when it comes to Gudra V-Star and its partners, a lot of people uh, want to pair it with... Uh, lost box and the reason being is it's quite easy to actually get up to seven nowadays uh even without scoop up net and beforehand it was even easier uh now this deck isn't actually optimized to get to seven as fast as possible in fact the most that you could possibly get on a turn one is maybe six if you count all four comfy and a chorus if you go second but you're not really there to get there that quickly because you do need a turn to evolve your gudra into gudra v star so your turn two attacker is usually going to be like crammer right? um its energy acceleration also doesn't just have to rely on the Mirage Gate. You can use Melanie as well in this list, which synergizes very nicely with Greninja so you can help get more draws into your hand. And Greninja is also a fantastic attacker, and that's mostly what we're going to use the Mirage Gates on anyway, is our Greninja. Now, I think the downside to a list like Gudra V-Star is it can have its ability or its effect of negative 80 reduced or taken away from itself if it gets roped bossed, which is a very popular combo nowadays, and with a lot of decks playing rope, it's not going to be too hard to find the pieces to get rid of that minus 80. But if you set up two Gudras and you're able to start swinging left and right with them, it's going to be a little difficult to swing over both at the end of the day i do think one of the harder things about this list that one of the harder decks that you could play against when it comes to this list is something like a lost box variant however this is my version of gudra v star and i do play the lost city in here lost city not only helps bring our mirage gate into you know its playable zone at seven in the lost zone but it also helps us uh it also helps us get rid of one of our biggest enemies to this deck, which is Sableye. Since Sableye actually attacks using damage counters, it's not affected by that minus 80 whatsoever, and it could just start piling 120s on Gudras all day long. So getting rid of those Sableyes, putting them in the Lost Zone in a closed deck type format, they don't expect the Lost City. They may accidentally or may have to choose between a Sableye and something else, and lost zone of sableye giving them only one for the rest of the game that's when you slap down that lost city get rid of that sableye and you should be good for the rest of the set which is pretty nice however you are giving away the information that you play lost city and they might play a little bit more careful next time but the lost city is there because of that pokemon it's also there because Kyogre could be a little bit of an issue. You'll notice that most uh, Lost or most Gudra decks do not play Manaphy, and Kyogre could be a little bit of an issue. However, if you know that your opponent is playing a Kyogre type build, the reason why I like the Lost City so much in this list is when your Kumpei start getting knocked out, instead of going into the discard, they're going to go into the Lost Zone. So it's less Pokemon on the field that Kyogre can target in the later game for a huge prize KO. And as long as you keep two Gudra in play instead of like two Gudra and three Kumpei and a Cramorant or Greninja and stuff like that. It's gonna be hard to get both of those Gudra on the bench and do 250 damage to it. So that is the list. It is not a very complex list and the deck isn't actually all that hard to play either. I really suggest you guys give it a try. It's a lot of fun and if you want to do well in future tournaments, honestly, I think Gudra is a fantastic pick. So let's go ahead and get into a couple of games so that way you guys can see what Gudra V-Star is all about. All right, so Gudra, Gudra, Gudra. What is so good about Gudra? Well, it's got good in its name, so it must be good, right? Like, that's how that works. I'm pretty sure that's how the Pokemon Company International is kind of designing cards. If it's got good in its name, it's got to be good. We will find out, though. We will find out. 
let's see what we are up against let's see let's see this is actually not that bad of a start really we got two comfes no way to get a gudra down turn one though which is a little bad Ooh, ooh, we are up against duraladon duraladon actually eats through our gudras pretty easily since it ignores the damage yikes dude give me the water energy sorry gudra v star we need to get a gudra down this turn that's the one thing we need to do there we go. We got ourselves a Gudra. That is pretty nice. We do have a Mirage Gate in hand as well with an attach for the turn. So we are kind of just chilling now. Okay. We are up against Duraladon. Duraladon is actually a very scary Pokemon to go up against with Gudra because Duraladon ignores the minus 80 with its attack. So that is something that we have to be careful of. It can't Oko us, which is nice, unless they play Charon's Care. Or not Char <laughs> Car Karen's Conviction. If they play Karen's Conviction, then they can Oko us in the later half of the game. But for now, that is something that we have to take into consideration. We definitely probably want to try and get two Gudra down. Two of our big main attackers down. We could also just like swing 220 or 200 on Duraladon 230 with a belt and then finish it off with a Cramorant later. That's something that we can 100% do. And they did get their... Oh, wow. They actually got their Arceus all set up. All right. So what do we need to actually save us? Uh, we definitely need to get the seven, which I don't think is happening this turn. We can get the four, five, six. We need a third Comfey and another switching option. And we need the V-Star with a belt. Because that the other switching option has to be a rope. Yikes. Okay, we'll go ahead and Colrus here rope oh wow oh no we'd have to lose cramorant though yikes okay we're just gonna lock that in go ahead and evolve flower selecting gets us a switch which I suppose isn't the worst thing on the planet. We are going to miss out on a Comfey, though. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. We do have Melanie. We have Nest Ball. But do I want to lose out on this Melanie? Because we do have a Water in Discard. And if... I mean, we can get the seven next turn, no problem. We might as well just go for it, right? We're just gonna say YOLO. We're gonna go. We're just gonna shoot for it. See if we can get there. So we can attach for the turn here. So we need an escape rope off this other Comfe. We need an escape rope off this. Ah, we didn't get there. We didn't get there. Chorus is nice for next turn, though. So we will take that. We can go ahead and Mirage Gate. Now, we can't attach or treat for the turn because we already did, but we at least we have a Gudra V all set up. So, happy to see it there. Happy to see it there. We'll give it the belt. And, yeah, we're just going to have to pass. Little unfortunate, little unfortunate, but, hey, it is what it is. Arceus' hands are known to brick a little bit, so maybe they, uh, maybe they do brick. Got themselves a boss. Okay. Do they have the V-Star, though? Oh, they got the V-Max. Okay, so they do have a Duraludon on V-Max. Let's see. Let's see. I don't think the Arceus V is as much of a threat, even when it is a V-Star. Uh, so I think we just try and get some early damage on the Duraludon here. But they're going to attack us first, which is awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Okay, so, but that's the bright side. We do have Moisture Star, so that is, that is huge. That is huge. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to have to Moisture Star early. It's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to attack first, but it is what it is. We'll get another Gudra on the bench here. We can go ahead and Colrus, get ourselves the V-Star. Yeah, that seems pretty good, pretty good. 
Yeah, they're going to scoop it up. They knew that we were just kind of like too far ahead at that point. So that is where Gujar really comes in clutch in those bad matchups. The fact that it can heal itself kind of resets that whole scenario where your opponent thinks that they can actually start taking KOs. But with that reset, you kind of just get what you were going for to begin with by attacking first. But you do have to use your V-Star power a little earlier than you really wanted to. But hey, uh, that is probably one of the harder matchups for Gujar, and we took it down. So I'm very happy with that. All right, guys, next game here. Let's see what we're up against. Now, Duraludon is one of the harder matchups. And, of course, it did fall to its own uh, design uh, where it bricks a lot. And that's that's kind of like where you can maybe like sneak in those wins with Gudra as well. If your Duraludon opponent bricks, they're probably not going to be able to really come back if you get a huge knockout early or if you reset early. So that way you kind of like get the first attack in. So... Yeah, I mean, that is that is unfortunate for our Duraludon opponent, for sure. They uh, bricked a little bit too much. Okay, this is a hand. This is something. All right, looks like we're up against Lugia. We are up against Lugia. That is a huge deck in the format right now. Let's see if we can actually get over Lugia. We definitely want to get two Gudra down because we are going second. So getting two Gudra down is really nice because... If they target one, we still have the other one to fall back on to get to the V-Star. Let's see, though. Let's see. Ultra Ball. Ooh, I'm going to get rid of a lot there. Now, this is actually still yet another really hard matchup for us because if they do end up putting down the uh, the Urshifu V-Max, that also ignores Gudra's at minus 80. So there's a lot of different cards out there that ignore the minus 80 for Gudra. Which hurts. <laughs> it definitely hurts, but uh, we have ways to play around, so we'll see if we can actually get there. Okay, let's go ahead and start with a VIP pass here. Get ourselves Comfey and a Gudra. Seems pretty nice. I want to get two Gudra down. We're going to go ahead and start with this flower selecting. Mirage Gate or an Energy. Let's grab the Energy. I think the energy is pretty nice. Uh, let's use this Mesa Goza as well. <laughs> Tails. Okay, so we don't get the Mesa Goza. Not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and retreat into this Comfey as well. A little flower selecting. Got a switch. We'll take it. Nest Ball. With a hand size that low... I don't think we need to get two Gudra down yet. With a hand size this low and no Archaeops in the discard, I'm not worried about a boss KO, so I don't think we need to get two Gudra down just yet. Another Comfey. Hmm. Might as well go for it. Might as well go for it. Let's go ahead and flower selecting here. Got ourselves a Melanie. So next turn, we can actually start swinging it with a Gudra V, uh, Gudra V star. Use this Melanie here. Draw three. Yeah, this is uh, this is not bad. We'll go ahead and I could get another Gudra down though. Yeah, we might as well just go for it. We'll go and get another Gudra down. Just kind of like fill up the bench, and we'll pass. <laughs> We want options, baby. Options. Okay, so an Ultra Ball. Probably going to go get Luminion, in all honesty. It does stink that they had to get rid of that Lugia V-Star, but Luminion kind of saves them. So this is why I wasn't too worried about them bossing out my single Gudra. But getting two Gudra down still doesn't hurt all the less. I think it's still a pretty optimal way to get Gudra up and running on turn two. Pretty much guarantee it at that point. So let's see if our opponent is actually able to get some Archaeops into the discard here. Capturing Aroma. They're going to want a Heads, I believe. They got Tails, so that is going to be a basic Pokemon. No Archaeops to be found. Another Luminion, though, actually probably isn't the worst thing. I think if we can find ourselves a Belt, and if they do play Urshifu, uh, if we find ourselves a Belt, we have the boss in hand. So that's actually pretty goaded. Because once that Rishifu comes down, we're going to be in a little bit of a trouble. A little bit of a trouble. So getting a KO on that pretty early will be nice. Okay. 
Arcane Nest Ball. There's the Urshifu. So we do need to find ourselves a belt pretty fast. We need to do it. There is the uh, single strike energy. Okay, so we need a belt. We need a belt. Don't know if belt's in the deck yet. Uh, let's go ahead and conceal cards here. We will get rid of a water energy since we can recycle those with Melanie. Got a switch and another energy. Flower selecting gets us another Melanie, but that does unfortunately mean that we will not be able to like boss out the Urshifu. Also, did we throw away? Okay, we did not. So I think we're fine to throw away that metal energy. Backup supporter just in case this supporter doesn't work out for us. Um, Go ahead and get into the Gudra. And also, if we can find an escape rope, that'd be pretty nice as well. Let's go ahead and switch. Because all of these are two prizes that we could definitely hit into. Yikes. Not much going on for us here. Uh, we can afford to lose a boss. We play three. We can attach for the turn here. Currently at five. Let's go ahead and just Melanie then. Draw three. Give us a rope. No rope. That is fine. Not that big of a deal. Yep. We'll just go in with a Gudra now. We can just go in with a Gudra now. We can actually evolve this homie up too. Really wanted to be able to get some damage. Got a huge KO on this Urshifu. Actually, you know, honestly, probably instead of Melanie, we probably should have actually just done damage to the Urshifu. Because then when it became a VMAX, then at least we knew that we'd be able to get a Oko on it or a knockout with a retaliating Gudra the next turn. So definitely a misplay there. We should have actually just went for the Urshifu, put some damage on it instead of worrying about the Oko. Okay, double turbo going on the Lugia V-Star here. Another Luminion coming into the hand. Or coming onto the bench. They are down in urn as well, which is nice, but let's see what they discard here. One Archaeops. One Archaeops. Now, if they do actually only play one Archaeops for this, it'd be great, but I definitely think they're going to throw one away here. Yep. So there is their optimal start. They got there. They certainly got there. Tyranitar can be scary because it can start hunting down these Humphys and dumping cards from our deck. Which is not going to be what we want to have happen. And Summoning Star to get those birds into the bench. It'd be interesting to see if he does have the uh, Urshifu VMAX in hand as well. See, Archaeops, what are you going to accelerate to, my friend? On to the Urshifu. Ooh, it looks like they might actually have the Urshifu in hand. Yeah, we definitely misplayed. We should have definitely swung into the Urshifu earlier. So that way, they would have been a little more hesitant on bringing it into the active, giving up three prizes and only taking two. We misplayed pretty hard. I think the only thing that can save us is if they don't evolve into the VMAX here and we're able to draw into the belt, we can at least uh, swing into the Urshifu for KO, but they do have the VMAX, so that's going to be that's gonna be painful. Yep, 330 damage to the face. Not looking healthy here. We are not looking healthy. All right. Still have a Gudra, so we are still chilling. We're still chilling. Actually, probably should have promoted a Comfey because we could have Beach Court, but that is fine. That is fine. Let's go ahead and Colrus here. Hopefully, we have an energy in the deck. We do have a Mirage Gate, so okay, cool. We did. We did have energy, which is nice. So we are going to be able to swing at the very least, but. We are not looking our healthiest currently. Yeah, we definitely misplayed. We should have bossed out that Urshifu before it became a VMAX to hesitate our opponent on actually playing the VMAX. We definitely messed that up. We definitely messed that up. But it's okay. Maybe we won't get punished too hard here. Maybe they won't have like two urns. They need two urns in the hand, I think. Judge, okay. Okay. Put all these energies back into the list. Don't mind that. Thank you very much. 
Got another Gudra, so that's nice. Primal Turbo. They are completely out of their single strike energies too, right? Yeah, okay, so all four are gone. They do need urns to actually get this Urshifu up and running again. Yeah, it looks like they're going to retreat. Okay, you know what? I don't hate that at all. We can actually find a boss's orders off of something like Humfei, or if we can draw an energy and uh, discard it for concealed cards and hopefully get our hands on a uh, boss's orders. We can boss out that Urshifu to take a huge KO and then find our third boss's orders later on to get a KO on something like the fish. So hopefully that is the situation at hand. We can kind of make this work out for us. Ooh, that was smart. Putting a gift energy on the Urshifu just in case we do boss it. Okay, 120 damage. So Gudra is now in two or three hit KO range for Lugia. So we top deck the boss. Yo, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the boss here. And we can bench this Gudra. I'm fine with that. We can rolling iron because we're safe. We know that we're not going to get KO'd by this Lugia, so we're chilling. <laughs> they will be able to draw off the gift energy, though. All right, three prizes for us. Hopefully, we can find ourselves a boss's orders to close this game out next turn. Because those fish, they're looking tasty. We're going to go fishing. Let's see. Lugia V-Star now back into the active. It's only swinging 120. Yeah, even if they found a way to get rid of that, uh, they would only be swinging uh, 140. So we would survive off 10 HP, thankfully. Ooh, that's actually going to be a problem if they can get their single strike energies back. We will see if they can get that rolling. I haven't seen them use an urn yet. They did throw one urn away early. Haven't seen another urn since. It could be in the hand. Nope, they're just going to go for a Tempest Dive here. Okay, fantastic. Love to see it. Love to see it. Got ourselves a belt. Let's go ahead and Moisture Star. So, yeah, we unfortunately don't have a boss in hand this turn however i don't think that matters too too much we can start building up a second gudra they can't take four prizes next turn bunch of ultra balls huh let's go ahead and use this ultra ball actually let's just take a peek into the deck and see what we have we do have that boss in deck it is there okay so what i'm gonna do just to accelerate the game a little bit more is we're gonna switch into a comfe we're going to flower select. Got ourselves an energy. Play beach court. We can retreat back into Gudra. I don't know if this is my last metal energy. I don't want to conceal cards it yet. So we're just going to rolling iron for 200 damage here. Let's see what our opponent's able to do in response. Mesa Goza. Okay, so they do have a Mesa Goza in the hand. Dude, I swear, Mesa Goza never works on PTCGL. I don't think I've ever flipped heads with a Mesa Goza on PTCGL. Oh, they got a boss's orders of their own. Okay. Not a problem. Do we have any more switches chilling around? Uh, We three switches in the actual discard we do have a switch lying around somewhere it might be in the prize but we still have plenty of escape rope as well there it is okay if i can hit boss's orders here we win oh we got there we got there okay so escape rope give me yep the archaeops up comes the Gudra. Out comes the boss. We're going fishing, everybody. Give us the fish. We could have got the Lugia, but the fish is just way better to hit. All right. So that is Lugia down. That was scary because that is two games in a row where we played against a deck that definitely is able to swing over our minus 80 reduction. So that is something terrifying to take into consideration if you are going to be playing Gudra in the future.
Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I apologize for my sniffles. I am a mess, but come next week, I should be 100% fine and back to my overly hyped self. But thank you guys for watching. I always, always appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Gudra V-Star and if you guys think that it's going to have a really good place in the future in the meta. We know that Paldea Evolve is around the corner and there's going to be a lot of decks out there that can really stack up the damage like Chen Pao. So we'll see where Gudra sits when that format is starting to settle. But at the end of the day, it's a really good deck. I have a lot of fun playing with it. Let me know what you guys think of Gudra, and until next time, stay safe and be kind. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard provides premium protection for your cards. If you need anything from sleeves to deck boxes, then Ultimate Guard has you covered. If you're a player or just a collector, you know that your cards will be protected. Check out their top of the line katana sleeves. These are the best sleeves on the market with a clear window for visibility and provide a perfect shuffle. If you're not a fan of clear windowed sleeves, then Cortexes are for you. These matted sleeves are like their katanas but at a lower price. Their shuffle is just as good and the protection is superb. So what are you waiting for? Help support the team by checking out the affiliate link below and ordering some fresh Ultimate Guard products today to get you shuffling. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS 12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad is partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24 seven, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. Are you trying to be the best like no one ever was? Now is your time. Head on over to metafy.gg and search out all our amazing Pokemon TCG coaches where you can book all sorts of training plans ranging from deck help to full season sessions with your favorite coach. What a great way to up your game. Check out metafy.gg in the description below and take your game to the next level. Challenge yourself against trainers from around the world to compete for the biggest online prizing yet. Are you ready for an unbelievable tournament unlike anything else you've ever seen before? The Shuffle Squad is proud to announce our newest tournament series, The Late Night Events, with an amazing grand prize that's bound to have you excited. Players can compete via play.limitless.tcg.com's online tournament platform every Tuesday to get a chance to earn weekly prizes and every week, your placement in the tournament is tallied by points based on your best finishes to earn your rank for the late night invitational event. The series will be conducted starting February 7th of 2023 and carry all the way through to the invitational on July 9th of 2023, where the top players will be rewarded the grand prizing. And the grand prize is a signed jersey and photo op with the entire Shuffle Squad, as well as a fully paid trip to the Pokemon World Championships in Yokohama, Japan. This includes hotel and airfare, whether you're a player or a spectator. Don't forget to check out all the live coverage on our YouTube and Twitch channel of the top cuts of these events for every week. And subscribe so you can get notified where to watch the Late Night Events Invitational brought to you by the Shuffle Squad. Now get out there and start winning. We'll see you in Japan.